Hey there, this is Miss Caitlin, and welcome back to another fall daily draw. Today we're on number 17, day 17, and we're creating apple pie today. All right, so for our drawing, let's just jump right in. You're gonna need a blank piece of paper. Maybe this is a sketchbook paper that you've been doing all of your daily draws in, and you wanna make sure that it's turned vertically, so tall like a milkshake. Let's go ahead and start by drawing in that box for our number today. So again, I always put it at the upper right-hand corner. As always, you can adjust the number how you like. You can make it fancy. You can make it in the style of calligraphy. You can just write it in. It's really up to you. We'll put one and seven, 17. All right, now for our apple pie today, we're gonna to be drawing the pie itself, like a whole piece, and then we'll be drawing just some apples around it. I wonder if you've ever had apple pie before. So the first thing I want us to do is I want us to establish where the tin is, and that's gonna kind of tell us where it's gonna be on the paper. So for our apple pie today, I want it to be in the center. So I'm gonna draw a curved line for that tin bottom here. Now again, you want this to be a curved line, not so curved like a U shape, but it needs to have a curve to it because a pie tin is round. As well, you're going to draw two diagonal lines. Okay. Now, depending on how the apple pie is made, sometimes there's going to be a very fancy kind of crust that's on the outside. Not always, but sometimes. So for our crust today, we're gonna to be drawing a very wavy line. So you're gonna to head to the top of the tin. It's gonna be right here. Go ahead and draw a wavy line all the way across. Then curve around on each side. And you're going to kind of try and mimic that line one more time. So if I have this line here on the bottom, I have to go up as well. So I'm gonna draw my line. I'm gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down, up. All right, so there's the pie crust. Now our apple pie today is going to be chock full of apples, so it's going to have a bit of a puff right here. Now, usually pies, when you make them, they don't have this kind of very round domed top. Um, usually they're a little bit flat, but just for our picture today, because uh, we're having a lot of fun with it, we're gonna kind of give it that little um, puffed top. So go ahead and take your pencil, and you're going to draw a curved line up, around, and down for a pie. All right, that looks like a pretty good pie. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit of those uh, holes that help the pie, um, the steam come out so it doesn't, you know, just get everywhere. Now, apple pies, you could do um, sort of a checker pattern across. You could do stripes. Um, you could just, you know, have the regular little holes like I'm going to draw. Or what some people like to do, which I think is really cute, they'll cut out shapes from the pie dough that they use for the crust and they'll cut them into little shapes like little apples or hearts and they'll stick them on the pie. So have fun kind of adding in some decor for the pie. I'm gonna go for a very simple take today, but you have a lot of time since you're just watching the recording to kind of add in things as you like. Now our pie just came out of the oven, so it is going to be very warm, which means there's going to be steam. So go to the top of your pie, draw maybe three wavy lines to show the steam like coming out of it. Now for the steam, try not to have all of these steam lines, you know, equal with each other. Have some be lower, maybe one be higher than the other, just so that it has this asymmetrical look. All right, now we're gonna draw some apple slices that are outside our pie. So for an apple slice, it's actually quite easy and you can kind of decide where you want them to be. We want three apple slices. So I'm gonna first draw a horizontal line and then a curve. I want them to be kind of close to the pie, so you can see I'm doing some overlapping here. And you would need to erase this extra line. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of, I have pencils here with me today. I'm gonna find my red pencil here. So this area here, I want you to erase that part of the tin that's going through the pie, because you don't want that there. You can draw seeds. And of course I said we need three apple slices, so I'm gonna draw one more little slice right here. If you want, you can also draw a full apple, maybe as decoration. I'm gonna have maybe an apple behind the pie. So I'm gonna go behind the pie here. I'm gonna draw a curved line 
and then another big curved line down, almost like a backward C. I'll draw a stem and a leaf. And there we have our composition. Now, you can add in other details at this point. Again, feel free to decorate your pie how you like, but for the pie tins, usually you can see little divots in them. They're made out of some kind of aluminum or tin. So you can draw some diagonal lines coming down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch us over into some coloring for today, but it's gonna be kind of distracting with those eraser lines here. So I have prepared another drawing without those eraser lines. You can see the arrangement is slightly different with the apples, but even so, it's less distracting. Okay, the only thing I'm missing are those steam lines, so I'm gonna go ahead and add those in now. There we go. Now you can take a Sharpie or some kind of permanent marker and you can outline everything. We're gonna be using color pencil and watercolor to fill this piece in today. Again, you can feel free to use whatever you like, but if you'd like to learn little tricks with uh, the color pencil and watercolor, please feel free to use those. You can see I've gone ahead and done a little bit of fancy work with the number. And what I also want us to do is um, practice some line width before we move on. So take your permanent marker, whatever it is it may be. It can be a black Sharpie, it can be any color. And what I want us to do is on the bottom of our crust, I'll even show you on the example. Check it out. So do you see how this line on the bottom of the crust is a little bit darker than the other ones? It's a thicker line because it's trying to show that that crust is kind of going over the edge of the tin a little bit. So that's a line weight there that we're going to play with. So take that permanent marker and kind of doubly outline that bottom part of the crust. Now, it doesn't need to be so, so thick, but giving it another outline is gonna really kind of change it and make it look more interesting. Like that. So you can see that already looks quite dramatic as a change. You can also go to the bottom of the tin and you can add some line width there. For me, because it is circular, like I said, pie tin, circular, I usually like to add more of the line width towards the center but maybe you like to just have it even all the way throughout. So that's gonna be up to you, but just kind of experiment with that a little bit. Now, if you want, of course, you can play with line widths on other parts of the picture, but you kind of get the idea here. You could even, you know, add line width to the bottoms of any little details you added into the crust. And the idea is that you want them all to kind of be in the same. Um, and what I mean by that is when you have a line width and you have it per se on the bottom of like, you know, the pie crust and you have it also on the bottom of the tin, think of it like as if we were adding a shadow. You kind of want the width, at least in this case, to kind of match. So I put all the width on the bottoms of each of those little objects, but that is not the case for every drawing. All right, so I am all done with my Sharpie. I'm gonna go ahead and take out some color pencils just to fill in some detail. Now, with the red color pencil, I'm actually gonna do the uh, sort of skin of the apples with this, just the slices. So I'm gonna take a red color pencil and just kind of fill in the skin on the sides. Now you could do green apples, you don't have to do red. That's really up to you. And then I will also use color pencil to fill in the seeds, and they're so small. So just kind of filling these in a little bit. Remember, take your time with this. We want the skin area of the apple to be even, smooth, and all one color, so no rush. For the seeds, I'll do a dark brown. You could also do black if you want. And then let's fill in some of our other small details. So I can use the dark brown again and I can fill in the stem on my large apple. And I can use a green, I might use this green here, to fill in the leaf. Now, if you want, you can also add a little bit of shading with your color pencil now if you so desire. So you could take your pencil 
Maybe on this apple here, you might fill in a little bit of the bottom. Remember, I kind of decided all my shadows are going to be on the bottom of each object today. So I'm going to make sure that that matches, that stays consistent. So check it out. I've got this apple here. And to make it blend so that it's just not a harsh transition, especially when I go in with watercolor, I'm pressing lighter and lighter and lighter until that color kind of seems to almost fade away into the white because it's not all filled in yet. You can feel free to try the same techniques on different parts of the pie, like the tin, for example. I'm taking a black, being very light-handed. And underneath the crust, adding in just a little bit of shading on that pie tin. So bringing that in, you can also do so on the bottom here. Really up to you. Just again, being light-handed with it because the black color pencil is quite an intense color. Maybe a little shading on the sides. And then I'll take my brown color pencil and probably just add a little bit of color inside. The little holes that we can see into the pie. All right, so that looks pretty good. If you wanna add more shading, go for it. I always encourage you to add more, be more advanced. But now we're gonna go ahead and move into our watercolor. So I have my watercolor palette here. I have my bucket just off to the side. And I'm going to be using a medium brush to start with. Now, I personally really like the medium brush in terms of size, but if you like the large brush, you can absolutely use it for this since there are large areas that we're going to be coloring in. Get your brush nice and wet and let's start with the pie crust. We're gonna be using a yellow because pie crusts typically are quite light in color. And we're just going to fill that in. Try and do those long strokes as best you can. If you want the color to be even lighter and not so bright of a yellow, you can get a tray or a paper, not a paper plate, excuse me, that would not work, or a plastic plate, and you can kind of water down the yellow in that tray or in that plastic plate. Just put down some of that watercolor, put more water with it, mix, and then you get just a lighter color of yellow to work with. So that's super important, especially when we're trying to shade is having a good understanding of, you know, how do I make my colors lighter or darker? All right, now speaking of shading, we're gonna add some in now onto the pie crust. We'll kind of work in sections here. Now we wanna use an analogous color to shade, but one that's also darker. So that would be a color like yellow orange. Now my yellow orange pigment, I already know is pretty intense. So I'm gonna pick up some of that yellow orange. I'm probably gonna mix it in with the last of this yellow color because I don't really need it. I want it to be lighter. I don't want it to be so, so dark like that one. Then with my brush, I'm first going to go right next to the crust, following along and with one stroke, I'm gonna add in the shading. I'm gonna take my brush again, do the same thing onto the little crust on the side itself with one stroke as best as I can, add in some shading. If I don't quite get the shadow that I want, like maybe it's too light, I'll pick up more of the yellow orange and very carefully do that line one more time. But be mindful of your paper. If you start to see like little parts of it kind of tearing away or little crumbs, that means your paper is a little wet and it might tear soon. So just keep an eye out for that. For the pie tin, I want it to be sort of like a tan-ish color, but it needs to be darker than the crust and the top of the pie, otherwise, we're just not really gonna have a good sense of contrast in our piece. So what I'm gonna do is pick up some of this brown. I'm gonna put it on the tray. Now that's already kind of dark. I don't want it that dark. So I'm gonna pick up some water, mix it in, and then go to paint. Of course, if you wanna darken it up, pick up a little bit more of the color from the palette, and that will make the color darker so that you can fill it in. You could also do a gray. So to make gray, by the way, 
You just put plain water on your tray or your plastic plate, take a teeny tiny bit of black paint, and then that right there, that's a gray watercolor. All right, so you can see my pencils, they are not water soluble. They're staying right where they are. So you can still see some of that shading that we did from before. Now you can of course go in, you could take that gray color or even a smidgen of black. Do this probably when the paint is already dry and you can add in more shading if you want to. Just be mindful that if your area is still very, very wet, the colors will start to bleed together. So I recommend when you are shading, just kind of wait for that area to dry a little bit before adding in too many you know, different or dark colors, especially if you're trying to keep them all separate. Okay, for our apples here, I think I'm going to fill those in with a very light yellow. So I'll just get a little teeny bit of yellow on my brush. Just kind of fill them in loosely. For apples, usually the insides are like a very white color or a very light like yellow. So I'm not worried about trying to get them completely, completely yellow, like solid yellow. You can see the difference between the two. Last but not least, we have our apple over here. Again, you can decide what color you need that to be. I've seen some apples that are red and green or some apples that are red and gold. So just pick whichever one that you wanna do. I'm gonna choose a red apple just so it matches my other ones. I'm gonna first concentrate the color here onto the side with the shading. And then I'm going to pull that color out. So you can see I have a bunch of red here and then I'm kind of pulling it away. And that will make the color go lighter and lighter and lighter. So that's another way to add shading with watercolor is kind of have like a side where you have all the watercolor, the darkest, and then kind of pull it away. Now that can be a little tricky the easiest way to do that without seeing a bunch of brush strokes is trying to do all the strokes going the same direction. So instead of going perpendicular to your strokes, try and go parallel to them. Now you could add shading onto the bottom of the objects as well. You could do this in either watercolor or color pencil. You can see in my example here, I did that with a very light layer of color pencil, but you could even do it in watercolor. So I'll take kind of the leftovers of my brown color here. I'll water that down just a little bit more. You can take your brush and kind of underneath each object, you can add in some shadow. Now remember our shadows today are underneath our objects, which makes it pretty easy for us. But if our light source was coming from somewhere else, like maybe say off to the side somewhere, our shadows would also have to kind of go in that opposite direction. So we're adding in just some shadows here and there. I'll add a little shadow underneath this little apple slice. And there we go. Of course, if you use watercolors, make sure you clean off any tray or plastic plates that you were using. But that is our daily draw for today, for day 17. Remember to share your pictures of apple pie down in the comments. I would love to see what kind of creative take you had, especially on creating the pie crust and seeing what kind of apples that you created. All right, we will see you guys again tomorrow. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.